does your hot water tank not make enough hot water? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you exactly what the problem is. So let's fix it. First, turn your water off and then open the hot water and the cold water so that there's no pressure inside. What we're going to do next is take this cover off. And you may want to have a pair of gloves on when you're doing this. Before we go any further, you want to make sure that your electricity is off by pressing this little off switch. Instead of the safety precaution, we're going to go ahead and kill the power going to it to everything. Now inside your water tank, there's a lot of pressure. So what we have to do is this is where you need the gloves for is you need to open up this pressure valve right here. Wasn't too bad. All right, so this next part, you want to be standing to the side and not directly in front of your water heater because water is going to come out. It's going to go everywhere. I don't have the right socket to pull this out, but I'm going to leave a link in the description below. I'm going to show you exactly the one that you need. But for now, we're just going to use a couple adjustable wrenches. Simply open up your adjustable as far as it can go. Get on that anode rod. We're going to twist counterclockwise. Water will go everywhere. Again, make sure your electricity is off because water and electricity does not mix. This is why it's important to relieve the pressure first and then let the water pour out. There you go. Well, apparently I didn't relieve all the pressure in that. So in order to relieve the pressure so it's not gulping like that, you gotta have this thing open up and open. Thanks for watching. I'm an idiot. Please hit the like button, subscribe, and leave funny comments below. Thankfully, I didn't lose my screws in that whole fiasco. Okay, so you can see the difference between the anode rod that was in there and came out like a rocket and the new anode rod. All the aluminum has been eaten away inside the anode, inside here, and that's what your water is going to attack first. But before we put in a new anode rod, what we need to do is we need to clean out all the aluminum that's inside there. And I have this little spray thing. So we're going to shove this inside, turn on the water, and water's going to come out. And then I'm just going to rotate it and turn it to get all of the aluminum. And you can see all the you can see all the chunks of aluminum in there. So you can see all this debris that was inside your water tank. This is from the original anode rod that was in there. It was deteriorating and that's its job. Its job is to get eaten by the water inside of there before your heater coil does. And you may be like, why is it all pink? That's because I put antifreeze inside there during the winter time. So before we put the anode rod in, now we can go ahead and put that pressure valve back in its place. Your aluminum rod actually comes with some Teflon tape. So with your Teflon tape, you want to wrap it around the threads of your aluminum rod. You only need to go around twice. Go ahead and take your aluminum rod and then hand tighten that thing. You want to make it nice and tight, but you don't want to over tighten it because you'll strip the threads. The next step is to get your old water heater coil out of there. So we use a flathead screwdriver to do that. Next, take a Phillips head screwdriver and safely undo them. Again, make sure the power is off when you're doing this. Now, even though the power is off, it's still a good habit to cover this up with tape. Okay, so this is where you need a one and a half inch socket to unscrew your, water, your heater element. You just go in. And then, whoa, look at that. Okay, so this is your brand new one, and this is your old one. So you can see how it's just dramatically different. This thing is all crusted over. It's covered in aluminum. So, now we put this one in. Now this has a little rubber grommet on there, so you don't have to put any Teflon on there. So put the heater element in there. Okay, now we're going to pull this off. Okay, so we're basically screwing the wires back onto the newer one. Go ahead and put the cover back on. All right, so the next step that we have to do, which is the most important, is to fill this with water. Well, it would kind of help if I plug this in into the RV to fill the water with the tank of water. All right, there he is. I know you want to see him. I know, you know. Say hi. Yes, yes. Go ahead and hit the hot water side. Okay, looks like all the air is out. What are you chewing on? 
for real. What are you chewing on? You make it look like I don't feed you. Oh, here we go. Tips on how to grow your channel. Show your cat. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the power back onto the RV. And so now the only thing that we have to do to get the hot water going with electricity is to hit that on switch. That thing is really tough to press. I don't know why. Go ahead and... All right, so let's go ahead and test out that hot water. That's impressively hot. Man, that's actually getting hotter than I can handle. 113 degrees. Thank you so much for tuning in to Fix It Rick. If this video was able to help you solve your hot water problem, please hit the like button, subscribe, and leave a comment below. And always remember that Jesus Christ loves you and only he can solve your biggest problem.